Hello and welcome to Hibs at the Fringe, a new mini-series of podcasts where we discuss the Edinburgh Fringe with some Hibs performing artists uh, and other Hibs related acts. Joining us today are the stars of 1902. Uh, we have Nathan who plays Deeks, Shona who plays Mags and Sands who plays Tony. Welcome to Easter Road guys. Thank you. Thanks. So the aim of these uh, many, many series of podcasts is just to talk through um, some performances and acts at the Fringe that have some sort of Hibs uh, connection, whether that's um, the the story of the of the performance or perhaps a Hibby that is uh, performing in their own right. But this is probably the perfect place to start. Um, probably if you flick through your Edinburgh Fringe booklet, uh, 1902 is the one that jumps out as being the, the strongest Hibs connection. Bring us back to the formation of the story. Tell us a bit about... What the what the play is about and how you come up with the idea? Well, I've like always been interested in like football for one, but like anything surrounding football. So like football firms and hooliganism just really interests me. Um, not like to do it, but <laughs> to like to learn about what's happening. Um, and I always wanted to write. I've write a story about it. Um, so originally the, the idea of by 1902 was a, like a group of Hibs fans, football casuals, that um, were getting ready to go and see Hibs play in, in a cup final because they hadn't even made it to the Scottish Cup final yet, but um, that go and see them in a cup final and it was just the, sort of the, the perseverance and sort of maybe the message was more like about it not working out. So like how how you deal with that sort of constant like being put down, like bring yourself up and putting yourself down in life. But then obviously Hibbs made it to the Scottish Cup final and that's the story changed completely. I was like, this just needs to be more light hearted, um and it can still be about real people, but maybe about learning about that the path that they're taking is not the right path and if they keep persevering then eventually it's gonna happen, which is what sort of mimics the actual story of Hibbs winning after 114 years. Um, so originally it was just me with this pile of paper with words on it in a room with eight actors who were my f close friends so I felt safe enough to try it out with them and they tried it out and credit to them the, the characters just came to life and it was a real like eye opener for me that this this had somewhere to go. So we continued with the development process and then the prospect of the fringe presented itself, which is a perfect opportunity. It's like in Edinburgh, um the the buzz about Hibs will still be happening. Um and it was a, a kind of feeling of trying to get in there first because like it's such an amazing story. So um we needed to really get in there. And it kind of follows um Deeks, the character that I play um, in a pretty rough time in his life. Um, he's just, he's lost his father, um, his brother is one of the biggest miscreants on the planet and doesn't know where he is half the time and he was left to look after his mum while his dad had passed away, which as you can imagine would have been a really tough time for him. Um, so his only escape is going to this pub, the Dog and Duck, with his pals and Hibs in um, the sense of hope that they could actually do it this year would be the one thing in his life that he would do anything to to see that happen. So saying that, he borrows a large amount of money from a loan shark, a local gangster, um, in order to procure tickets from some shady dealer who's selling them for £250 each. <laughs> and he thinks, oh, no, this doesn't matter. Like We need to be there, we need to be there. And it's that sort of mentality. So... It's all about them and, and, and sort of what happens to them because of the bad decisions that they're making. And uh, it's sort of the resolution is that they realise that it, it's time to start to start doing and stop saying I think the line is. <laughs> um, and it's like, it's, it's not just about football. Like, I know that the title can be quite misleading because um, a lot of people thought that it would be about, about 1902, about that, that great Hibs team in 1902. But... Um, it's more about the people in the story. It's about people who society sort of leave behind and they don't really have a place um, in life. So they, they go down the wrong path because they're looking and they're trying to find somewhere there and they keep getting knocked back so they're only left with certain options. Um, but it's, it's a story of hope more than anything. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's for football fans to enjoy, more specifically Hibs fans, they get a different thing out of it um, because there's loads of jokes about Hibs and there's loads of jokes about Hearts expense. <laughs> um, and, but it's also for theatre people to go and see, um, but it's more for people who don't go to the theatre. We want to reach out to that sort of demographic. We want to reach out to the people who think the etiquette of going to the Lyceum or the Traverse is really intimidating because it really can be um, and give them an opportunity to just sit down enjoy a show and maybe even like it might be a bit sort of arrogant to think that that might change their opinion on theatre itself like they might think twice about going to the Lyceum now if, or the Traverse where they've gone and seen that and they might end up starting to like a few things um, but that was that was the main goal um, and when they won the cup, that was the that was the real sort of driving force to like we need to make this happen. And you guys are a, a collection of of young um, actors and actresses, um, predominantly Edinburgh based, predominantly Hibs fans. Yeah. So I guess this project was almost the kind of perfect. Yeah, um, it's like a it's like a passion project. Like everybody who's involved, even Sands himself, like they we love it. We absolutely love this story, and we love. The show, like the majority of us met at college, um, mm -hmm. at Telford College, um, and just stayed friends through there. Uh, and I met Sands through performing in another show and the festival. Um, and that's really what like this whole actor lifestyle is about: is meeting these people who you can work with again and again and again. Because again, you don't get a opportunity much in this industry to work with your friends. Um, and that, although that presents a lot of difficulties at times, <laughs> um, it is something special to be able to create something that you're all passionate about, that you all you all want the same thing, and you all get the same thing out of it. That's what I've realised is mm. that for being a Hibs fan, for being a Rangers fan, for being a Dundee United fan, like uh, one of the other boys in the cast, like you all get the same thing out of it, um, and that's really important that we get to showcase that and showcase what, what we can do as a sort of young and up and coming company competing in such a really dog eat dog situation yeah. like the festival. Yeah. It was basically, for me anyway, there was no way I could turn it down to be part of it. I think it's probably the first thing that my dad has come to see that he's actually enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> like he's lied about all the other ones, but this one he was actually excited to come and see because being a Hibs fan, most Hibs fans, I'd imagine, or at least a large percentage of Hibs fans that I know, theatre isn't really their thing and there isn't really a lot of overlap in the theatre world between Hibs and shows in the Fringe. So for my dad, he was actually getting to come and see something that he was interested in and that was an interest of his. Um, and getting to feel like you're reliving that day that was such a, an incredible yeah, yeah. day for... For all of us, apart from Sands, which was a horrible day for him, but <laughs> tough luck. Yep. Um, it's you can't really miss that opportunity. I, I don't think, I don't think you'd want to miss that opportunity. And that's what a lot of people say when they come out of the show is that it genuinely felt like they were reliving that day, mm -hmm. which is amazing for me to get to make people feel like that. And you it, can see it though. You can mm -hmm. see it like in their faces, like they're kicking every ball with you, you know what I mean? And it's like that guy last night when the line is like everything was going in slow motion and he was like, oh, stop it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, come on, just get on with it because we know what's about to happen because they, they, they want to be in that moment constantly. And this is what, it was another reason why we brought it back again. So this is the second time we're doing it. Like last year it was quite a big success and this year we're trying to make it an even bigger success. But um, the, one of the main reasons for it, bringing it back is because there's such a buzz about the team at the moment. You know what I mean, there's such a buzz about this. This it's like a new look Hibs. Like they're they're doing so well in Europe. Like when does that ever happen? <laughs> they're they're just there's and there's a buzz about Leith. Like Leith's changing. It seems like it's, it's I, I think you used the word evolving. You know what I mean, it's becoming like something new. Um, so it's it's good to be able to be a part of that in the way that we are. You know what I mean? Yeah, the timing of it's perfect. Um, in regards to us creating this show and working, as what Nathan said, of us working together as a team of close friends, that's a blessing in itself for us. And to create this real atmosphere in the confines of the Wee Red Bar, which just lends itself so perfectly for yeah. um, for the fans and 
maybe non-fans as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I uh, um, maybe I shouldn't admit it on this podcast, but I am a I'm a Rangers fan, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so even more reason to hate me when <laughs> if you come and see the show. Um, but I get that same sense of excitement and that absolute buzz. I had I get goosebumps every time at the end of that show um, with the feeling that's in that room, and as you're all saying about the the feeling of what's going on, the team and everything. There's just, timing is perfect right now for it and it's an absolute treat kind of in general, but for both audience and actors alike. Yeah, yeah. I think that's something that that I could probably reflect on as well. I I think 2016 is such a special year, a special moment for all Hibs fans and probably from a club perspective, there was always that concern that the the feel-good factor would eventually wear off Mm -hmm. and we didn't want to just be focused on that that one success story. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, but thankfully, you know, two years later, you're right. There's still a, a massive buzz around the place, um, and it's hard to understate the importance of that cup win as as part of it. Um, when we did a, a cup tour, there was so much um, emotion in people's faces, and I was at the show last night, and you do relive every every kick of the ball from. Running through the the run to the final with Wraith Rovers and uh, Hearts and Inverness, yep. um, right through to the the commentary and the the slow motion when it comes to the to the final game, there's certainly a feeling of of authenticity which maybe comes from um, partly I guess your guys' backgrounds, being Hibs fans uh, and knowing the emotions from that, um, but also in the set, so it's you can maybe talk us through um, for the the listeners can start to visualise what the the set looks like with. Um, the kind of nature of the bar and the decoration around yeah, it. Yeah, so like the wee red bar is brilliant because one, it didn't cost us a lot to get. <laughs> and two, it's like it, it's it's just like such a it, because it's like it's home to like raves and like and gigs. It's like a really alternative venue. It's like quite hidden, so we needed to signpost that a lot better this year. But it's the bar itself is like it's quite small. Um, but the acoustics are fantastic Mm. like the sound bounces off everywhere Um, uh, so it's like a rundown bar it's run by Mags who is um, she's a bit scary (laughs) Um, (laughs) but she doesn't really take good care of her bar but she's not really proud of it she just doesn't give it's like one of these bars that no one really goes to Know what I mean? Um, this is the show, not the wee red bar. Yeah, yes, yeah. The bar is like if you can. I don't know how to picture it. I, I picture it like you know the four in hand, and there it's like you go in there, and it's like th- these boys go to this pub because they can control it because no one else comes in, and they can act like it's their base for like their their firm, so to speak, um, without really being bothered by anybody. Um, but. Because Hibs have made this cup final, and they've like turned it into almost like a Hibs hub. You know what I mean? So there's like memorabilia all over the walls that they've probably stolen. <laughs> um, like there's pictures out the frames, which clearly they've just taken the pictures and swapped them over with whatever and put them up. And they're really proud of it. They take pride in this. There's like bunting up everywhere, and it's all Hibs, Hibs, Hibs. So when you go in there, it's quite it's quite an interesting feel when you go in because it was. The wee red bar, it's almost <laughs> ironic that mm-hmm. we're it's, It was very red, yeah, yeah. which was unfortunate. Show, so we needed to make it more green, though, I mean, so uh, there's a lot more green in it now, but it's, you go in there and you can look, like, we've got a couple of sign strips and stuff like that, and I think it's it's things like that. And, and the audience is, like, in the round. Well, it's almost in the round. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can, when you come in, you are coming into a full bar scenario. It's not a sit down like a live CMF or anything. You're coming in. There's tables. There's chairs. There's bar stools. There's. You know, it's a bit kind of mismatch, so that there is that feeling of you know you walk into a pub, you go find your table, and that's where you're going to be. Uh, one central table in the middle is all we use as our set. Um, Although people do try and sit there quite often. They do. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's like what comes with the fringe is it's unpredictable, you know what I mean? But they come in and you can grab a drink. Um, and that was really important for us is that they, because that's 
just you just feel comfortable sitting there with a pint, you know what I mean? Um, which kind of lends itself to sometimes when people like shouting out and that, especially like days like yesterday after a 3-0 win, they've been out all day and they come in there and they're shouting and raring, which adds to the atmosphere, you know what I mean? Like people who aren't even football fans that have come up for the things that are sitting there, they get that authenticity mm -hmm. of being like mm -hmm. in that, that sort of football environment. And what was good about the bar is we didn't have to really like do much to create that atmosphere, no, I mean, you're already in it, but as soon as you sit down, you're like, we're in a pub, we can go up to the bar and get a drink, it's, it's not, we're not, this is, this is strange, you've got the musician, it's all live music, so, we've got the musician playing, and, um, and we wanted a bit of, like, ambiguity as to whether, like, they're going to sit and watch this musician, so, like, at the start when Deeks bursts in, but, um, yeah, it was, it, the, the venue is, very special to us. Like we've had conversations about when we keep when we keep this going. Like because it's like last year I said, oh, I don't want it to be just a one and done thing. But it's not a two and done thing either. No, I, mean, I want to keep it going and going and going until I get no enjoyment out of it. Like I'd do it in front of three people for the rest of my life if I could. But um, we wanted to create. Um, we were like, we wouldn't really want to go to like a bigger venue because you just lose that in intimacy. Mm -hmm. We'd much rather either extend the amount of shows we're doing a day, put ourselves through more torture for that, <laughs> but um, rather than, it was we were it was luck more than anything. It wasn't yeah. like planned. Yeah. It's become our spiritual home for yes. our theatre company. Um, and as to put draw on what again what Nathan was saying about the atmosphere of feeling it, especially when there's. Hibs fans in there and there, you know, and that day like yesterday where it was after three 0 win, and they can feel it. The testament of that was even last year that we had an American couple who came to see the show. Um, they don't, they didn't have a big idea of what was, you know, what they were really letting themselves in for. They were obviously just picking a couple shows from the brochure, go see it and have a good day at the fringe. But they came and saw ours. They were in absolute tears at the end of it just from feeling the emotion of it and they ended up going to a Hibs game later yeah, that week with a bunch they, of people from the bar. It's on, <laughs> it's on Hibs net, oh they loved Effie's backflips and stuff like that, I don't know what I mean, and then they came back again and again. And they were bringing new people in. Yeah. People every time, and then they're coming down to Easter Road, which is why like we reached out to Hibs, is because like we want them to be coming down here and seeing Easter Road and learning about Hibs as much as you guys do, you know what I mean? It's, I think it's important for them to, like, we, it's really strange the the Hibs fans that walk away from that, so there'll be Hibs fans in, like, Romania and, you know what I mean? It's like Hibs across the world type thing, and again, that's probably quite arrogant to, to say that we're flagshipping it for them, but um, that's part of our ethos is to fly the flag for Scottish theatre, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if we can, if it's, it's in our best interest to promote Hibs as well, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you debuted last year at the Fringe. Yeah. Um, talk us through how that went. Well, so we started off um, with a, a capacity of 15. Um, that's how much we were banking on getting because if we could sell out that, then 15 was really a, a good number to have. Um, so the first couple of shows, we were doing it to like six people, which we're used to because we've done the Fringe before, but they were they were still getting something out of it, which was good. I mean, it didn't really, and it was important for us to learn that when the bigger audiences would come, when the smaller audience come after that, they, they still need to get that same experience. And that was really important. So it was good for us to learn that, like right at the start. So we started off with really small audiences, but those were just like diehard Hibs fans. So that's the ones that we were really looking out for. So I'm glad that they came because then word of mouth just spread. It just went all over the Hibs forums and word of mouth. And we came down to Easter Road to Flyer before the games last year, I can't remember what, it might have been a part of the Thistle game. Opening game of the season. Yeah, yeah, opening game of the, yeah. the season, uh, part of the Thistle. Um, and we were flying down here and there was, we got a really good reaction from people and obviously and they must have heard from somewhere because all of a sudden the bookings came flooding in and we got to f 15 on the on the Fringe website and getting phone calls from the Fringe being like, Dad, we're getting phone calls about like them not being able to buy tickets. like. It's only the third day, how can it be sold out? I'm like, okay, well, we'll just we'll up the capacity, then we'll up the capacity again and again, and just the ball kept rolling until finally, like, we were selling out shows, which is where we want to be as performers, as people who want to make money from what they do, from people who just 
we it's it's good to have that feeling of everybody coming along to see it um, and it went really really well like, yeah there were days we were squeezing like 74 people into the wee red bar yeah which is well, if you see it like that it's uh, just absolute madness you can barely move and it's an amazing atmosphere but that's when you can like as like performers and as a theater company that's when we can sort of like assure ourselves that this is what this is the right thing to do mm. this is what we want to be doing which you don't get a lot of like being a performer I don't feel like that like you, you get taught from like a really sort of early stage in your career that this is like an atmosphere of failure like you're gonna fail more times than you succeed so when those times come along it's really important so it's like how we can stamp ourselves in there with like so the Traverse were performing in the same venue as us last year and um, there was maybe a sense before we started of going like oh that's like one of the biggest theatres in Edinburgh like if they're going to see like that show are they going to like stay and come and see ours and but at the end of it we're competing just as just as well as anybody else so that was really important and it has legs you know what I mean that's what told us that it has legs because mm -hmm. as it went on we we're selling more and more tickets you know what I mean and we didn't really want it to stop but because we are as early in the stage of our theatre company as we are like we don't have the sort of resources to like capitalise on that and get a producer to go right I'm going to phone up this theatre this theatre this pub this pub but again it's so transportable you know what I mean that can, you could do that all we need is a pub really we can yeah. put up our hibs things in any pub mm. and like I was talking about how like the Hibs thing, people, that's the first thing people ask is like, oh, if you're a Hibs fan, are you going to enjoy it? I mean, eh, or if you're not a Hibs fan, are you not going to enjoy it? But like, you could substitute any story in there. Like, you look at Leicester City, you look at like Leeds United, like Manchester City, like all these footballing places would get this story, of this underdog story, you know what I mean? So it's, it's not a case of that because it's Hibs, it's not going to sell anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, so, and we really wanted to take it on tour, and that's how we got to go to Dundee, but unfortunately it just seemed to sort of dip a little bit there, um, and we kind of, like, all our hands were tied and that we, yeah. we couldn't really do it anymore because we, do, we don't have, like, loads of money behind it and stuff like that. Between that and other work commitments and stuff that we yeah, were all in, yeah. it just kind of meant that there was a slight kind of pause, press, like we kind of all pressed pause on 1902, but we all knew by the end of the Fringe last year, no matter where the year was going to go, you know, obviously we went up to Dundee and it went down well there, but we knew at the end of last year already we'll be back at the Fringe next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fringe uh, 2018, Saltar Sky Theatre is back with 1902, and then that's it was only a case of how many shows we were doing, not mm -hmm. if we were doing the show. Yeah. 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 And so you've really ramped up the number of shows then. <laughs> yes. So uh, yes. <laughs> this year we're now performing uh, two shows a day at five o'clock and half past seven every day of the Fringe except for Thursdays. Um, and so that in total will be 44 productions over the course of three and a half weeks. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A big fan of you keeping Thursdays clear just for the Europa League game. Nah, that, that, that was only reason. That was only reason. Nothing to do with the rest. <laughs> <laughs> so you're about a week, a week into it now then. Um, um, has the reaction been the same or similar a year on? Better, I think. I think better. Better, because we started it with the numbers that we were end them with I would say uh -huh. um, like t tonight is going to be uh, tonight is our first like double sold out day um, like in pre-sales so yeah it's definitely better you just so like we've got we do like a little um, that little speech at the end um, and we're, we got like a, a standing ovation um, two nights ago and like that feeling is for me like because because like I, I created it and I wrote it and it's, it started off like from nothing to like this where like because I've been an audience member going to see shows where you're like that was amazing like you just want to stand there and clap for ages and come on like everybody like get up and just show your appreciation for these people like being in that position where people are wanting to do that for you is it's, it's second to none like yeah. and it's testament to all these guys like I, it could never have been done without them and it was important because we've changed it about this year. Like one of the cast members, who who was a, he was a bit older, um, had to drop out, and he was playing Craig, the sort of antagonist. Um, he had to drop out, and we hosted like 
casting calls um, and sort of it's, we got like one or two people coming along but not, not they weren't right and we were never going to change it unless it was going to be perfect so we had to like reshuffle the cast about so there's people playing parts this year that didn't play those parts last year they played another part so it was really difficult so and the, a lot of them were really apprehensive about it um, and like oh what if it's not as good as last year so like the reaction that we're getting now is mm -hmm. it, it shows in them like you yeah. look at them and the, the performances just come from a level here which is the, the staple level to like here they just take it on the chin and like they, they just it's just new things, know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I just love that you used here, here to, to describe here. something in a podcast. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Use your imagination. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> I think the biggest thing that proves how far we've come for me is that last year, just before we opened, we were sitting at like 50 pre-sale tickets. And this year, before we opened, we were sitting at like 530. So we multiplied by 10 the number of tickets we'd sold at that point last year which felt amazing uh -huh. um and we were nathan especially is very bad for going on tickets to see how many we've sold like every 10 minutes and being like we've got two more we've got two more <laughs> and it's like it, it's so exciting and we, we always kind of hope that those two people are like another two hips fans because it's great when theater people come and see it obviously yes. but when it's hips fans it just adds a totally different atmosphere to it it really is yeah um and that's coming from one of the sides of the enemy. Yeah. It's, like, it just it feels great. And like we were down here the other day uh, before the match, uh, flying, and we had the guitar out, singing and everything. And we were getting, you know, you could just feel that atmosphere of that buzz that's down here right now, um, of this excitement of this season could be quite a good one. I think it will be quite yeah. a good one for Hibs. Um, and there's already that excitement. We're flying and chatting to people as well. And they're speaking to us going... Oh, we either saw it last year and we're coming again, or oh, we've heard so much. And there's that feeling of you're feeling the buzz that we already had for it, and now it's kind of becoming this unity that yeah, yeah, and this excitement amongst not just one of us, what one side of us, trying to go. No, trust me, this is going to be a good thing. Um, they're all now talking about it, and that they're telling other people, and it's yeah. you know the this buzz is spreading, and it's just yeah, it's a, a really nice feature for us to be kind of mildly on you know on the sidelines of what's already a really great yeah. atmosphere right now down because it could have gone the other way you know what i mean it could mm. have went it could have been like it could have been a one done thing you know what i mean like <laughs> that's so we saw it last year it was good but let's move on to yeah. something else yeah. you know what i mean but it's not and i think it really mimics what's happening with hibs yeah. uh -huh. you know I mean? and i think that's so such a coincidence but like i'm happy about it um, so we're, we're happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone is pretty happy. Everyone's about it. happy about it. No, I mean, so. And you had a you had a special guest down at one of your shows last year. Some yeah. dudes yeah. had quite an influential role in the yeah. original uh, <laughs> Scottish Cup. Yeah, I, Sir David Gray yes. came in and seen the show, but unannounced. Like um, you had no idea. No, no, no idea. Idea. we didn't because we would have given him a, a complimentary <laughs> ticket, obviously, because of David Gray, and I've he paid for that. a ticket. I've literally I've said that, and I've tried to like message all the players on Twitter and stuff like that, and be like, if you want to come along and see it. Not be paying for a ticket, like it's about you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, he's sitting there and, like, so modestly just comes up with his ticket that he's paid for, sitting up the right of the back, not sitting at the front, and he can clearly see everybody being like, oh, I know, all the Hibs fans going over and shaking his hand and getting photos with I him. Know. And that. I felt so sorry for him, and part of me was like, Well, you're here to see us, so. <laughs> 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 just stay in the back. Like <laughs> it's funny actually because uh, I'm obviously sort of in the bar at the start of the show, and um, the rest of the cast are up, up this corridor backstage, and the there's room. They're, they can see through the door. And I nipped up just really quickly to speak to Nathan, and Nathan wasn't listening to a word I was saying, which isn't really a surprise, because he was looking <laughs> through the door, I was like, and he that? was like, "Is that?" <laughs> Is that David Gray? And, she was like, and I was like, shut, shut up. up. And I turned around and we were all like, oh my God, that's David Gray. <laughs> and the what pressure for that and show. Be like, oh my God, just here's your money back for the ticket. Uh -huh. Everybody was turning around like, right, guys, nobody's getting any lines wrong. Yeah. Everybody's saying everything right. This has got to be the best show ever. Yeah. And he stayed behind after, you know what I mean, to talk to you about it. And 
be like and say he enjoyed it and they, he showed a real interest. Yeah, he was like, an absolute gent towards everything uh, with us. It was, like, it was really, greatly appreciated. Yeah, it's important for us to be able to sort of show, like, especially the Hibs support, that they, they're coming along to see it. So get you. If it's good it's enough for David thing. Gray, then it's Ex good. Uh, exactly. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you and, couldn't have, um, we couldn't have put it better ourselves. That was really cool that you came, actually. Yeah. That, that was one of the highlights of... And it's just been much. such a whirlwind, even for me, like, so even sitting here and doing this, like I was saying earlier, I grew up as a Hibs kid, I grew up getting my birthday cards from Hibs every year and feeling like, yeah, it's all right, <laughs> and getting my Hibs kit for my birthday, and then to be sitting in Easter Road doing a podcast about our Hibs show that David Gray came to see is just... It's unbelievable. It's, it's unreal. <laughs> My dad has never been so proud. Yeah. Everybody is absolutely buzzing because it's like I obviously grew up with all of this and I had my season ticket and I came to every game and it, uh, one of the guys at my school, his dad, uh, Duncan Reed, is actually the doctor for Hibs and we would always, he, Gavin would get to go to all the games because his dad was the doctor and we'd always be like, ah, oh, but he's in hospitality and I want to be in hospitality and we just grew up with Hibs being such a massive part of our lives so to find myself here is just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It's unreal. And, and as I said before, like, I think that authenticity shines through. There are so many player references mm -hmm. or, or the chants mm -hmm. or whatever that I guess for a lot of, if you take football films as a... a as an area, as a, a sector, sometimes they lack that authenticity because mm -hmm. football can be quite hard to replicate, whether uh -huh. it's in a film or, or on, on theatre. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's certainly a, a strong element of that authenticity to, to the show. And that, that is really important. Um, oh, definitely. Like I was saying, when there, there was errors in the script, the Hibs Network were quick to pick up on them and uh, they were swiftly <laughs> sort of changed. But we have our reasons why we did it, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. we don't know what happened. Know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it's like the the hips, hips, the hips songs. I mean, like that album that yeah. we used to listen to in the car. In the, the car way. with our we scarves used, at the uh, windows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like all those songs, like having them sort of like peppered throughout the show and that helped like pass the time and stuff like that was is important because Hibs have really good football songs. Hibs have do. the best like football Sunshine songs. on Leaf, like you were saying, I'm so know. jealous. It's, it's that's a, so is annoying. It, it's, 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 it is the best tune, no? it is song amazing. to have for a team. It is absolutely <laughs> tremendous. Yeah. It's like surprising, like, like Sunshine on Leaf, the musical we're written with the Proclaimers music is so easy to do because it tells a story, you know what I mean? And like, we, well, me and you specifically, when we're thinking about the songs that are going to go into the show, is like, how can we relate that to like, how people are actually feeling at that time? Like, mm -hmm. so like, for instance, like he's just lost his dad and stuff and then there's the song, um, Hibs Heroes, which is like um, when I was five, my dad took me down to Easter Road. Like it's just such a, just you make that connection. No, I mean even though if it's not meant to be like that, mm -hmm. even if it's meant to be sort of like a happy, cheery song, mm -hmm. like it's, yeah. I think that adds to to the emotion that you feel at that yeah. at that moment uh -huh. in the show. Mm -hmm. No, what I mean is that there's it, it, he's almost talking ha about something happy when something sad. Uh -huh. Like going on. The authenticity of that really comes, I would say, is testament to Nathan and Shona predominantly. Nathan is the writer who, I, I mean, I can't fault his script. I mean, the, the sad thing was that there was an even longer script originally and there was a real kill your darlings of having to cut it down for the timings of what the fringe is. Um, so there's, I mean, a whole load of material that's sitting there in the back burner. Originally, I, I wanted it to be an hour and a half. For two forty-five minute halves, like a football game, but but in the fringe, you can't really do that. But if, maybe one day that could eventually happen. But the authenticity as well, um, alongside Nathan's tremendous writing, is shown as that real die-hard, as what she's just said of be it. You know, this was your childhood and your adolescence. Mm -hmm. So like the every tiny bit, you know, there was always a relation to it. Yeah. Um, I mean, Shona was real, really hard on some of the boys at times, <laughs> and they weren't getting things right. If you're not going to sing it right. Don't sing it. I had to take some of the chants out because they, they couldn't, couldn't sing do it. it properly. And, the, uh, <laughs> um, and like it's just little things like that. We needed it to be that precise. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Because that's what makes it. 
that's uh, what makes it. They were doing that, and then I was kind of Mr. Devil's Advocate, always looking at, because, I mean, I'm, I, I'm as much of a football fan, but obviously from different city and different team, that I was kind of the source of going, well, does this work as well for the non Mm-hmm. complete Hibs fan, you know, because, I mean, I absolutely adore the script. I've got fa- uh, friends who came over to see it last year, um, Rangers fans, Celtic fans, Aberdeen fans, and they all felt that same absolute euphoria of what was going on in the show. Um, but, I mean, the, I would really say that the testament for the authenticity is down to the, the other two sitting here right now. And given the importance of that authenticity, has it ever gone wrong? Has there been a reference <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a great oh, question. He's going to hate us for saying this um, story. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's been a few. Yeah, there, there has been a few. You don't need to mention names. It may be pretty easy Cameron Docker. Cameron Docker. <laughs> <Cameron Docker. laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, one of the boys in, in the cast, his name just got shouted three times, which is lovely for him. Cameron Docker. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, he's not a, a particularly big football fan. Um, and... At the end, when we'd started the kind of commentary for what happened in the final, he, uh, he his line is, is, picture it, Hamden Stadium, which I know, and he apparently doesn't, because in one of the shows last year, he went, picture it. Yeah, completely out of the blue, never done it before, picture it, Tyne Castle. <laughs> and everyone just froze. And then he went, oh, ha, I mean, ha, Easter Road. And everyone was like, nah. And then Josh, um, who nope. plays the idiot in the show... <laughs> And in life, uh, and in life. <laughs> Hamden. We, we were played at Hamden, at Hamden. <laughs> <laughs> which was uh, that was definitely an interesting show. Uh-huh. And I tell you what, if any of the other wee slip ups annoyed Hibs fans, then that was certainly one I that was going to end it. Like it's like as a cruel mistress that Hibs net and how he's been. You know what I mean? You're like you're trying so hard to just appease them. You know what I mean? It's like in in the script, um, because unfortunately I wasn't able to actually make the game. Because uh, due to work commitments, which probably shines through in my character <laughs> in it, because he do- it ultimately doesn't get to go. Um, in the script on BBC, and uh, that's who I blame for this, <laughs> is it says <laughs> plus, uh, 90 plus 3 minutes, because it was the 90 second and 32 seconds or something. Um, or th- milliseconds or whatever yeah. it is, and it was into the 93rd minute. So initially it said 93rd minute, and I instantly got ripped for that <laughs> on, on Hibs Net. It's good to say he's not got to it. It's good to yeah, say oh no. where I go. <laughs> go he's no, over okay. it. Oh, man. <laughs> it's only been a year. I was like, oh, come on, just, just let me have this one thing. I'm so sorry. You're like, read these things, and you can't post on it. And it's like, coming after that, it's like, yeah, I won't be going after that. Uh, it lost me there, and I just got up and walked out. It's like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully after this they, they appreciate your uh, your apology. Yes, I <laughs> that's it. Apologies, <laughs> genuine mistake. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it can happen to the best of us. I mean, you've said Sans has said that I bring the the authenticity to it, and yet in one of the opening shows, I got the words to sunshine on Leith wrong, which went down like a lead balloon with my mum, who shouted at me for about five minutes afterwards. But I've never done it since, and I'll never do it again. It wasn't again. completely wrong, you just did the wrong verse. Yeah, I just sang the second verse first, but that's still completely unacceptable still, yeah, as still far as I'm concerned. Out, but... Yeah. but if you come and see it, that won't happen again, so don't worry about it. Yeah, it's exactly. Fine. Yeah, when she gets the words right, she sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm totally over that as well. I don't still have nightmares about it. It's fine. <laughs> so, remind all our listeners in... Uh, where is it? When is it? And how do you get tickets? So we are on at the Wee Red Bar, which is just off Lauriston Place. It's actually in the campus of the Edinburgh College of Art. It's on twice a day um, at 5pm and 7.30. And you can buy your tickets online. Um, there's On the Ed Fringe website. On the Ed Fringe website. Um, if you just go on and type in 1902 at the Edinburgh Fringe, it's the first link that comes up. Um, when you click that link, um, there's, we've got a couple of two for one days, which is today and tomorrow, which are pretty much sold out. But you can still get some tickets on the door, so don't be disheartened if you go on the site and it's sold mm-hmm. out. Like we we're not uh, not not accustomed to um, squeezing people in over the capacity um, because it'd be a shame for anybody to miss it. So you can come come on the door. The doors open uh, half an hour before the show starts, so that's. 4.30 for a 5 o'clock show and 7 o'clock for a half 7 show um, so you can come and then 
almost guaranteed that you'll get in. Mm. Yeah, we're on every day until the 27th, apart from Thursdays. Yes, third to the 27th, apart from a Thursday, because that's the European nights. Uh, yeah. Our listeners will be busy. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. At least this week and next week, and hopefully. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully that. beyond. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can't believe I'm saying that. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, thank you very much, everyone. Thank um, you. Thanks. That was 1902 um, with Nathan, Shona and Sands. <laughs>